Hubert. Amelia is a theater manager and trans advocate, as well as a community builder and strategist. Please welcome to stage Amelia Marion Hubert. I don't think I've ever been called a strategist before. I'm sort of flattered by that. <laughs> That's me up there. Strong, passionate, transgender woman and advocate. But despite all of my talking, my speeches and interviews, there's still a part of me that I've never yet shared. A shy little child inside, longing to be heard. So in the spirit of tonight, I share her story. The mind of a child. A battle's been raging in there as far back as I can remember since an awkward little girl dressed in the skin of a boy was thrust under a pool table by her best friend in the middle of an imaginary war. It's acid rain! We need more cover, he yelled. Pushing me under the pool table, he ran to a nearby closet and pulled out two jackets. He put on his own and threw the other at me. Put this on and stay here. I'll find us a way out. And he ran off again. The purple jacket landed on my lap and I was paralyzed. Staring at the small flowers embroidered on the collar, I knew this was something that was forbidden. Quickly reconciling the danger the garment possessed, though, against the terror of corrosive acid rain, I took my chances and I put it on. In the moments that followed, alone, hiding in my little foxhole, enemies closing in and acid rain pouring down, all I remember feeling was at home. After that day, I decided if that's what made me happy, that's what I wanted. So, our next trip to the mall, I found a similar coat pointed it out. Oh, please, can I have it? I really, really love it. That isn't for you, scolded my father. You'll like this better, my mother said, shoving a Ninja Turtle replacement in my arms and rushing us down the mall. Well, that, that was odd, I thought, but undeterred, I pursued in my requests. Dad, I want to be a figure skater. Can I learn to figure skate? No. End of conversation. Let's sign you up for hockey instead. That'll be fun. Dad, can I maybe take ballet this summer? No. Go to your room. Let's put you in soccer instead. That's what you'd like. Dad, could I maybe sort of do guides? No. Well, could I? No. But maybe? No. But no. Please? I didn't even know what happened the first time. Suddenly, I was on the floor, and pain shot through my body. I'm sure not out of anger, but desperation, he resorted to the only option he thought he had left. And then he resorted to it again, and again, and again. From that point on, requests were no longer met with words. And then one day, there were no more requests and I was taught the horrible truth that I had to bear in shame. I'm disgusting. I should be ashamed. I should be hated. I am hated. I hate myself. Then one day, the internet, a place then thrilling and new, showed me a world I'd only dreamed of. A world where men were allowed to be women. I was so excited at this chance, I ignored the fact that they were being humiliated. I ignored the fact that they were being treated as slaves and sex objects. I didn't care. That's what I wanted and I jumped in with both feet. Dignity seemed like such a small price to pay for the hope of finally being myself. I traded away piece after piece in pursuit of that hope but I never found it. And when I finally had no more pieces to give, freezing and alone, I was left stripped bare. How could this have happened? How could I not have seen? I just wanted to feel pretty, but I knew I wasn't. And with nothing left, I ended my life. I found myself in hospital, where I cried weeks away into months, until the day came when, with what strength I still don't know, from deep inside of me that little girl let out a squeak. What, what if it's just that I should have been born a girl? 
The doctor pulled away. No, that's not a life that anyone wants. I'll do you the biggest favor you'll get here and forget to note this in your chart. I suggest you never mention it again. And I didn't. But ashamed and self-hating beyond all measure, I did do all I could to destroy that little girl. I starved her. I made her throw up when she did eat. I drugged her. I cut her. I burned her. I hurt her in so many ways. But that little girl, she never stopped trying. Can I have a prom dress, she asked. Can I have those shoes? Can I be like her? Can I be called Miss? Can, can I be a mom? Can we be ourselves? Can I? Can I? Can I? Enough! All right, I'm transgender. I blurted out loudly and firmly to the psychologist whose office I had just stepped into before she could even introduce herself. We either have to deal with this or I can't do it anymore. Okay then, she said slowly and composed herself from my unexpected, somewhat impolite disclosure. Then I guess we better deal with it. Why don't we start by sitting down? Sheepishly, I sat. For the first time in my life, I made space for that little girl. Hi, I said. I'm Amelia. She smiled back at us, an estranged pair, strained beyond all measure, but ready at last to heal. It's very, very nice to meet you, Amelia.